Time now for the morning rush. Suspected serial killer David Parker Ray's girlfriend will soon be out of prison. Cindy Hendy was sentenced to 36 years in prison back in 2000 for kidnapping and sexually torturing women in Elephant Butte. Now, the Department of Corrections says that she is set to be released on Monday, almost 20 years into the 36-year sentence. She will not be under state supervision after the release. We're waiting to learn if a judge will release a woman from jail accused of horrific crimes against her children and pets. The attorney for Martha Crouch is asking that she be released from jail, saying her health problems are not being taken care of. The DA's office says it will be asking for proof of Crouch's medical records. Chris. Crystal, we're going to see showers and storms develop across eastern parts of the state. This evening about 5 p.m. notice the strong storms over the northeast. See the red and yellow colors. That gives you an indication of strong storms. Some may be severe, producing quarter-size hail and 60 mile per hour winds. David? New Mexico's attorney general has agreed to take over the DWI case against a state senator. The New Mexican reports that Hector Valderas will be taking over the prosecution following a request from District Attorney Marco Cerna, who cited a potential conflict of interest. Last month, Senator Richard Martinez was arrested in Espanola on suspicion of drunk driving and rear-ending a car. We're showing you a new video this morning that will likely be used in the in court case against the Uber driver accused of fatally shooting his passenger. Police say Uber driver Clayton Benedict admitted that he shot James Porter, saying Porter threatened to run him over. The two are allegedly arguing over a cleanup fee. Benedict is charged with second-degree murder. The driver in a crash that killed two undocumented immigrants is waiting to learn if he will spend the rest of his life in prison. On Monday, Robert Acevedo pleaded guilty to conspiring to smuggle immigrants. Border Patrol says Acevedo lost control of his minivan while attempting to escape authorities. He got into a crash that killed two passengers and injured at least five others. New this morning, the president is saying the surge at the southern border is slowing. The Trump administration announced yesterday that apprehensions of migrants at the U.S.-Mexico border have dropped by 28 percent. Last month, the border authorities turned back more than 104,000 migrants. In May, they turned back over 140,000. The Trump administration's Remain in Mexico policy now includes the Texas border town of Laredo. Now, this is the first expansion of the policy since the U.S. and Mexico brokered a deal to stop President Trump's tariff threats. Customs and Border Protections has already started returning non-Mexican migrants who claim asylum at the Texas border city of Laredo back to Mexico. A cause of death not yet released for a man who died in the custody of Gallup police. Officers were called to J.C. Penney late last month to reports of a man intoxicated. Police say Rodney Lynch was combative as officers tried to gain control of him. The sergeant noticed Lynch appeared unconscious. He died later at a hospital. State police are leading the investigation. Chris. Crystal, let's take a look at that Metro Threat Index today. I actually have it slightly elevated at a four, and that's due to the hot afternoon temperatures. Talking about the warmest day of the year, a high of 97 degrees, and then enhanced wind later on this evening. Winds could gust up to 40 miles per hour as we head towards midnight. David? Right now, Bernalillo County is conducting a study to see if putting a Hawk traffic signal will keep people safe. It will be placed at Texas and Central. County commissioners say due to an increase in foot traffic over the past decade, the Hawk signal is a necessary safety tool. County bonds will pay for it, but it's not a done deal just yet. New this morning, a New, Mexican dis uh, New Mexico disability program is about to get a major overhaul. That's according to Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham. The Journal is reporting that Lujan Grisham wants to eliminate a backlog of roughly 5,000 people with developmental disabilities waiting for help from the waiver program. A recent Facebook post shows Colorado's governor is calling New Mexico chili, quote, inferior. Last week, Governor Jared Polis posted Whole Foods Market is now selling chili from Pueblo in most of the Rocky Mountain region stores. He says stores in New Mexico will be the only ones carrying the, quote, inferior chili grown in Hatch. Sandoval County is spending more tax dollars trying to prevent a flu-like disease from spreading to livestock. Recently, two horses in Corrales has tested positive for VSV, a virus that can lead to lesions and prolonged fevers in animals. The spraying will take place during the day and night twice a week. The cost for the increased spraying is coming out of the Sandoval County budget. Manhattan is getting ready this morning to drop more than a ton of confetti onto the streets. It's all part of the ticker tape parade victory parade rather for the U.S. women's national soccer team. This all comes as the team is waiting to see if the president will formally invite the team post win to the White House. Already the team has accepted an invite from Democratic leaders to Congress. Here's a fun story. One of New Mexico United's youngest fans is on a mission to bring the team's latest news from the sidelines to the crowd. Seven-year-old Daylin Johnson originally penned a single article for community-produced newspaper Somos Unidos News. Her family says she kept going from the sidelines to press conferences, and the team's coaches and players are some of her biggest fans.
But happening tonight, back here in Albuquerque, the city is hosting a watch party at Civic Plaza for the United Minnesota game. That free event features concession stands selling food and alcohol. Fans can begin showing up at 5 p.m., but be sure to bring your own seats since a large crowd is expected. This morning, if you're a pet owner whose animal may have run off during the 4th of July weekend, Animal Welfare is asking that you stop by, see if they're in their care. Over the holiday weekend, they took in more than 120 pets that they posted pictures of on their website. We have a link for you on our website, always on krqe.com. Chris. Chris, so let's take a look at that traffic out there. Everything looking pretty nice along I-25 as well as I-40. Notice all the green on the map, and that is good news out there. We're taking a live look outside of the big eye. You can see traffic flowing very nicely out there on this Wednesday morning. David? In the good news, we now know what actors from Breaking Bad actors Brian Cranston and Aaron Paul are up to. This week, we told you about the cryptic messages posted on both actors' social media accounts. Now, some thought that they were alluding to a new Breaking Bad movie, but yesterday they revealed they are working on a new mezcal called Dos Hombres. It's going to be made by hand in Mexico. If you didn't know, now you know. Well, good Wednesday morning. We're taking a look at future radar this afternoon. Notice by 3.30, we begin to see some showers and storms developing across the northeast, talking about Union and Colfax counties. And then we see those showers and storms increase in coverage as well as intensity. By 5 p.m., you can see that near Clayton, there's a pretty strong storm. Those red and yellow and orange colors on the map indicate that these storms are going to be strong this afternoon and evening. Some may be severe. The best chance for severe weather will be, say, from about 3 p.m. until 8 p.m. And we're talking about eastern parts of the state near the Texas border. That's where the best shot of uh, severe storms are. We're talking about hell up to the size of quarters with the strongest storms as well as 60 mile per hour winds and now cloud to ground lightning is possible with any storm that develops this afternoon. We're talking about uh, isolated storms in the strong to crystal mountains also. So if you have any hiking or cycling plans, just keep that in mind that lightning is likely with any storm that develops. Well, time now for the five facts. Oh, we start with number five here. One of New Mexico United's youngest fans is a young girl on a mission to bring the team's latest news from the sidelines to the crowd. The team caught Daylin Johnson's attention when her family, season ticket holders, met the team and coaches before the season. Since then, she's been penning articles for a community-produced newspaper, even attending press conferences. The U.S. Open Cup quarterfinal game between the two teams will kick off at 6 p.m. tonight. You can bet Daylin will be watching. At number four, a lot of people are talking about the finally revealed secret between Breaking Bad actors Brian Cranston and Aaron Paul. This week, we told you about the cryptic messages posted on both of their social media accounts. Some believe that they were collaborating on a new Breaking Bad movie, but surprise, they are now working on a new mezcal called Dos Hombres. It's going to be made by hand in Mexico. And at number three, we're talking about winds picking up in the metro later on this afternoon into the overnight hours. Winds between 20 to 40 miles per hour possible. Make sure you put away those trash cans and secure that lawn furniture. And number two, new this morning, New Mexico's Attorney General is agreeing to take over the DWI case against State Senator Richard Martinez. The New Mexican reports that the request came from First Judicial DA Marco Cerna, and that he's citing a potential conflict of interest. Now, last month, Senator Martinez was arrested in Española on suspicion of drunk driving and rear-ending a car. Martinez has pled not guilty to aggravated DWI and reckless driving. Number one, now in less than a week, suspected serial killer David Parker Ray's girlfriend will be out of prison and off the government's radar. Cindy Hendy was sentenced to 36 years behind bars back in 2000 for kidnapping and sexually torturing women in Elephant Butte. On Monday, she'll be released and no longer be under the state supervision. That's because Hendy took a plea deal three months before a new law would have forced her to serve at least 85% of that sentence.